Hello and welcome to Dive for you for MSI 2023. Got Dagda, we got Raz here. How's everyone doing? How you feeling? Good, good. Like happy to be joining you lads as well. Like a little bit of a tiring run. Like it's a bit oh, late. Had a, yeah, had a oh, yeah. like a tough flight in, you know, an hour and a half. I had to be at the airport at 3 p.m. It was a toughie, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you guys are a little bit more arrested, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I had a really nice flight. Red eye, 11 hours. <laughs> <laughs> land, land, get to the hotel, shower, instantly do a podcast. You know, was it like an 11 hour flight or something? Yeah, like that? I didn't sleep on it. So, you know, I'm running yeah. on like then, uh, 36 yeah. showers. You the know? funniest thing, too, is that me, <laughs> Sounds easy. I, I get knocked out in a flight. Like I will bring Raz stuff. Raz is straight narcoleptic. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. I will bring things and I'll be upset because I'll be like, oh, I brought a book or this time I had a switch. Like uh, I also brought like I downloaded a few movies or shows. Better Call Saul. I watched three episodes, knocked out the rest of the fight. I just could not remember the rest of the flight. This guy. Wait, were you sitting beside each other then? He was in front of me. He was in the okay. seat in front of me and he was goading, like gloating, I guess. Uh, he was gloating about the fact that his entire row is empty. And I had one guy at the far end. And then here comes get who came? A fam a family of five. <laughs> <laughs> little two little kids, probably like age four, and then a baby. And, yep. and two parents, oh, and the parents sat next to me with the baby. How are you alive still? Well, I, I left. I, 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 <laughs> fortunately there's another seat next to this old woman who's very nice, and I sat yeah. next to her instead. He tried to sit on my seat, but the problem was the, the dad. <laughs> or the seat right next to me. The seat right next to me. But the the dad that was in the seat next to him had just went and taken a seat all the way back. So it was literally, he had no leg space if he even tried. So he just became a uh, in-flight immigrant really so quickly. A refugee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go focus up though onto MSI. Before we get into the teams and stuff, this is a, a pretty big deal. It's the first time in Riot International Tournament history, I believe, that we have double elimination happening. So how do you guys feel about the, the format overall for this year's MSI? I really like it. I think it's super interesting to actually see like we guess teams that are at a similar level a lot more facing off against each other rather than when you think about last MSI or even at Worlds, you just get one or two teams that are beat over and over again. It's not really fun to watch. And yeah. it doesn't feel like those teams are getting any kind of experience out of it either. So I think it'd be really cool to actually get these teams that are on even footing going head to head and seeing what they can learn from each other. Um, but also then obviously you still got some of the, the top dogs in there. So you'll still get to see the really good teams and still get that experience. But yeah, um, yeah I think it's just super exciting. I just love that we get a bracket format and we get rid of best of ones. Thank God, like we finally did it. I was a doomer for a while. I, did, I was a non-believer the moment a change did come to MSI format, but it was just more best of ones. The Rumble stage was like, here, okay, you guys completed the first best of one last, stage. Last year's MSI. Yeah. Here comes another best of one stage. I was like, please, I'm begging, get us out of here. I like watching fighting games tournaments, you have losers bracket, watching like CSGO or Valorant tournaments, you have losers bracket and just generally a bracket stage format. Um, so the fact that now we get to have that is amazing. Like I love this format. I am a best of one apologist for programming reasons. I think it's really cool when all your teams play on the first day and you get to see more matchups uh, in direct head to head, but you do get dead games. And to that point, I think Riot was like ODing on yeah. best of ones. We have multiple best of one stages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We heard your issues with the first best of round format. Here comes another. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, <laughs> I always like, you know, viewership is more averaged out because, you know, you have all the teams playing and you yeah. super space. Like, there's programming reasons to like best of ones. True. I understand for fans other reasons. And I, I'm, I hope that the lower bracket gets put to good use and it's not just like they get 3 0 in finals and you get like this really hype, you know, best of five finals. Because sometimes the, you know, like the two best teams are on the same side of the bracket and it's just like, oops, yeah. semi <laughs> semifinals was the best match. Yeah. Yeah. So it happened. I remember actually uh, 2018 Worlds, it was like IG versus KT, and you're like, quarters? No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah. Please give him a loser's bracket. <laughs> so at least we'll have something like this. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be potential for rematches in the loser's bracket later on when we actually get into stage two. I mean, that'll happen, and I generally personally like that. Um, so looking forward to it. Cool. So since we're on this dive for you, and I'm not sure if we're doing the second one or if it's going to be like rotating. No, just save the best for first. Yeah, yeah exactly, so exactly. Come out with a bang. It's all downhill from here, guys. Exactly. So just like, comment, subscribe on this one. Ignore whoever's next. Yeah, in fact, negative Zale. comments on the next yeah. one. <laughs> Downvote the second episode. Yeah. Uh, but while we're here, let's just go all out for the first prediction that we're going to talk about. Who wins MSI? Right out the gate. Go to your head! I want to... <laughs> Give me your time. Sorry! Fuck you! I like, I want to say JDG, because like obviously XLPL, I mean, we both are. Yep. But like, 
United has always disappointed me at internationals. The fact that top esports didn't make it to playoffs at Worlds. Like, realistically, like, yeah. you're now looking at this guy going, oh, yeah, JDG, they look excellent. Like, they're coming out champions from LP. But I don't know. I just find it real hard to to get behind Knight on internationals. I, look, I think he got it same. all out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe space. You're fine. We can get a nice chair for you to lay down. And I can be your therapist. <laughs> the <Give> funny thing. <laughs> I feel like now that... You know, I've been in the LCS side of things. Like, I'm a little bit far removed from it. Yeah. So now I can just say JDG. This is not, I, <laughs> I don't have sweaty palms anymore when I say this. <laughs> I'm not like deeply concerned, checking social media, being like, oh God, did they tweet anything this time? Is there any drama this time? <laughs> like, is there any bad noodles this time? <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that I've always been really high on night as a player. I think a lot of people have been, obviously, this you know when he comes out internationals it doesn't turn out as great as it has been but like i think he will have a great performance and we're just waiting for it he, he, he's due for it and also the team is just a little bit too broken if they had a commissioner in the lpl and a league of legends <laughs> they, they would have blocked the trade or yeah, would have blocked that trade Ooh, ruler i don't know about that I mean, that's what i'm gonna say is even if knight goes mom spaghetti again you have ruler instead of hope now it's a bit of an upgrade you I might bet. say maybe a little small one right there <laughs> Just a small one. you have three six nine you have yeah. ruler you have uh knight your soul lanes are set and just in oh, case yeah. if the exactly just in case it's a jungle meta yeah you have kanavi uh, it's it's a really good uh, team for any meta, so I'm I'm actually really excited for them. Okay, so I was also going to be JDG, but now to be different and stand out, yeah. I'm going to go with uh, the most popular team in the world, T1. Oh, how you <laughs> going for the, going for the fan vote? Good job. How don't send trucks at me, guys. I'm 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 a fan. Uh, but You're I also cursing them. So. I'm cursing yeah. them, but I also will say they get a narrative buff because I think that this team is maybe the most motivated on the international stage, given the two failures in finals last year, MSI and Worlds, the heartbreaking Worlds loss. To oh, death. domestic finals too. Yeah, oh, they just lost the domestic yeah, finals. Is. That was a bit of a shocker yeah. as well. So, like, I think this team's going to be a little angry, be a little pissed off, hopefully. Um, and, of course, like, they were really good for the vast majority of spring split. So, it's yeah. like, they have the talent to do it. So, I'll just, yeah, get some fan posts. I will me. say, though, I do think Genji, like, stylistically have a great matchup against a lot of the top. Like, if we're looking at JDG and T1, obviously, mm -hmm. just beat T1. Um, but for JDG as well, like, a team that's slow and controlling and, like, when JDG aren't exactly the cleanest, can actually do quite well there. Yeah. So I actually think it's going to be super interesting. I think especially in, when we're shifting from best of ones to best of fives, I think Gen G just showed how well they prepped against T1 and how well they prepped for a lot of the playoffs. They are going to be a very difficult team to overcome. And especially if they're playing like they were in finals, I don't know if JDG and T1 have it. Ooh, so I love that uh, point. I think the best thing about an international event a lot of the times is the adaptation. Yeah. The teams that generally are like great on paper that have the talent that you say, oh, the ceiling's really high on them, but they start tend to start really slow. Like Samsung Galaxy White was a great example of that versus Blue. That was a team that was like really well prepped, but like technically had a ceiling. Um, technically Samsung Galaxy again <laughs> later on World. <laughs> they lose to RNG. So like historically you generally see teams that are like not seed one teams, but teams that are like C2, C3 that like are recognized as really talented players, but need to get into the meta and also kind of understand how they really fit into that. So I actually think the point on T1 is valid. I think they have a, real, a lot of talented players. They proved that throughout the regular season and obviously when it came to the bracket stage and lost in the finals. Like I think the two key positions for me, I know a lot of people would say Zeus. I'm not concerned about Zeus. I'm looking at um, jungle and support. Karia and owner, I think are exceptional talent. Obviously Karia is like the best support in the world. Um, but I think jungle support's the most important in a best of five series, just so you are setting up the map, you are dictating how fights start and end, and he also has like the largest champion pool, so you can impact the draft right from the get-go. So I think T1 should be that team uh, that like goes into the finals versus JDG and stuff like that, but that's, I am supporting you and your bandwagoning. <laughs> Bold of you to call Carrie the best, <laughs> best support in the world when you've watched Zen all split long. Oh, so you, okay, all right. <laughs> it's, it's, that's a deep headline cut. If, it's, if anyone missed that on Reddit, that's it's actually true. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's uh, get into something a little bit more close to happening, I guess, rather okay. than looking at the end of the tournament. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, start with our homerisms. G, 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 G2, where do you yeah. guys want to start? I um, mean, I feel like I'm 
out left out to dry here where you stay with That's true. <laughs> hey, how about that draw show where you guys uh, sniped out the easier side of the bracket? What's up yeah. with that? Huh? Dumb. You give, just give us with BLG on our side. <laughs> Explain yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, there's a window behind yeah, you. Sorry. I was so heavily involved in the draw show. Yeah. You know, it was all my fault. If only it just picked mm-hmm. the right ball from the right place. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think there might have been a reasoning behind it, but I'm not exactly sure the ins and outs of it all. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Life sucks, guys. I don't know what else to say. So, so should we uh, should we go on Golden Guardians while yeah, you, you go we'll try and pitch? You. Are are you worried at all? Given that we have a somewhat difficult side, Golden Guardians for okay. for reference uh, plays Gam first, and yeah. then also on their side is then uh, Movie Star Rainbow Seven and BLG. Even if you lose on this side, you can still fight your way to try and fight one of the losers from the other side. So it's like, again, double elim here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, Golden Guardians is a surprise for most North American fans. I don't know if internationally people even had them on their radar at all. I, like it was yeah. not a team that was particularly hyped up through most of, even when they were having their little resurgence, it was like a, hey, good for you, Golden Guardians kind of resurgence. I don't think people expected them to get here. Yeah, the miracle run that they had throughout playoffs, so like six seed moving forward, like they were a team that a lot of people, I had just completely sold into the river. It's like, this team will not make it. Like during the regular season, it was a roller coaster ride. It was fun. Yeah, it was like 0 4. Okay, you guys are bad. <laughs> and then, oh, seven game win streak. Okay, you guys are great. <laughs> and then starting to fall in the uh, back end of the regular season, like, okay, no, you guys are back to being bad. <laughs> so, and so uh, the roller coaster of emotions was pretty, uh, was there, but the two members that were consistently performing uh, was River and Gory. So, River and Gory were and will still be the core of this team. Add in who he is well just because he's linked up to their plays pretty consistently and also the funny thing that i've heard and we've talked about on the broadcast was the fact that the team speaks at least in mid game in korean and then like who he will be the one translating to the rest of the guys of what they're going to be doing on the map so it's just like a bit of like sections of like oh they're speaking to amongst each other about korean and then who he's like oh yeah so you're going about <laughs> that's what's happening so uh, but it's it's been really good. It's been really successful. The team's been rolling. And I think their major points of success has been like during the regular season, they were a really stale team in draft. A lot of the times they've been making basically playing tanks, top lanes, uh, blinding no matter what. They'll be the Renekton top, Scion, like Gragas, all of that. Uh, but then in the playoffs, they started to flex just literally everything and give counter pick to Licorice. And Licorice has been performing quite well with counter picks. And so like now they've suddenly been able to counter pick for Licorice, uh, flex. Tristana, both Gori and Stixe, uh, win through bot lane, and I think there was another flex that was there as well. So like they're just a really hard team to predict going into a best of series and draft against. Yeah, uh, Golden Guardians, I think in, in playoffs, made me feel pretty good about them in series. The fact that they had a lot of different things that they could kind of like reach into uh, if like plan A didn't work. Mm. Um, they were pretty resilient too. They, they had some games where they would throw massive leads in yeah. game ones and then come back and win game two. So like, I think for North American fans, you should be relatively confident about getting through play and stage. I think you're probably gonna have to do it through the last chance qualification match. It probably will be dicey. It will yeah. be a clencher. It's, I don't think you're gonna cleanly get through BLG unless like, it, been just like super runs it against licorice somehow and like because it's a best of three to qualify in like yeah. maybe you somehow rip off too but most likely you're, you're going in through the, the the lower stage I yeah think. and it's more of the story that a lot of people have started to really love golden guardians for but like the resurgence of the players like sticks and licorice players that have experience have been there before have been to an msi um were at the top at their roles in a like at one point in their career and then fell off and a lot of people expected their careers to end uh, for Licorice, they expected his career to end with uh, FlyQuest during that catastrophe of a season. And they expected the same thing from Stixe after leaving CLG and basically moving towards the coach. He literally retired. <laughs> I think that's the pretty nice one for me because yeah. I was a big CLG fan back in the day and watching like Stixe and Afromu, I just look, Worlds 2016 was it when he went the last time. Like they were such a good squad. Yeah. And then to see him back is just so nice. And, the, and just speaking to those players, like hearing from them in their interviews that they've had publicly, confidence. Like just the injection of confidence that's come through these players, like being when you're winning again, you're like, wait, I like they're the second guessing that you always have during plays that you lose out in winning opportunities. They're just like suddenly having the confidence to act on that. That was the sticks a play that he had versus double lift in that series, uh, that game five in that series. Like he's had multiple of those throughout a playoff run. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a team with more experience than you might initially think. Obviously, Licorice made 
semis for Worlds. Yeah. You have two players in Huhi and Stixie who have made finals for MSI. River has been to multiple international tournaments. He's yeah. also won three PCS titles back when he was over there. So it's like it, it's a team that's actually uh, quite veteran and, and probably experienced with high high pressure situations. So I'm I'm relatively uh, confident about them. How about you on on the G2 side? Is the f- um, I'm a bit of a mixed bag on G2 at the moment because I think uh, yeah, <laughs> well. They finished fourth. I mean, this is where everyone was giving stick to bad lines because they were like, this team is going to go to MSI. They're yeah. going to be the fourth place team. And then it's just their complete role reversal. <laughs> it's like, wait, it was so, it's so Oh, that was amazing. That was yeah. by far my favorite. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm a bit caught at the moment. I think for Caps in particular, it was a really disappointing split for him where just randomly he would, well, for one, he wasn't playing his traditional champions. It was a lot more about trying to set up Yike, right? Which I do understand if he's bringing out like Zacks and Malphites and Sejuani's and yeah. all these things, right? You're not going to shine as the big star carry. But even then, when you see him on things like the Jaces, he'd just make these weird, really weird mistakes where he'd overstay in mid lane, try and get a turret plate, and you're like, well, they just took Dragon. You know they are coming mid. There's nowhere else they're going to be going, but would often get caught. So there's a lot of weird mistakes like this that G2 are making, but when G2 are on, they look absolutely fantastic. And if, coming back to the, the jungle point, if we do actually end up shifting into this meta where we have like Kha'Zix and Nidalee's like, Yike back when he's on LDLC in the ERLs was essentially Kha'Zix one trick. Yeah. Like he is really damn good in this champion. And then when you start to bring in the Nidalee's and all this kind of stuff and you already have a team that likes playing around him when he's on the Belvets, I think that could be the big standout for G2. But it is just super difficult to try and call because I think Broken Blade, trying to see how he's going to fit into the top side, mm-hmm. is going to be very interesting when you do have the likes of like Bin and all these guys that are absolute monsters in the 1v1. Um, yeah, I think there's just a lot of questions for G2, and I don't think they have answers either. I yeah. think when you look at them with their run through playoffs, it felt like they were still trying to figure out exactly what identity they wanted to play. Like even bringing in like Nocturne for Caps in the mid lane, it felt like there was a lot of things that they were trying and not really a lot of things that they'd really solidified themselves on. You know what I've noticed here? What's that? We're worried for different things. <laughs> I feel like when it comes to the Golden Guardians conversation, we're worried that they're getting out of stage one. <laughs> I was going to ask him. I was going to ask him. He's like, oh, I, I don't know. And I'm like, what do you, what do you not know about? You're like, <laughs> uh, what I'm hearing is I'm like, what, they're going to lose so loud? Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're going to lose so loud? They're going to like, what are, you, what are you saying? Sorry, my expectations are for winning the tournament. Oh, that's probably going to be a different game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate this so much. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. Uh, what, what do you think about, like, I forget which team it was. I think it was Matt. I forget who said it, though. It was like, oh, we actually think G2 is the second best team in the region. Like, we thought that was the real finals. Oh, and yeah. Then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Oyoya, And then they also you know, always post their scrim results, which I think is really cool. Shout out um, yeah. for that and saying who was, who was dipping out on scrims. <laughs> uh, but they had a really good scrim result as well. You know, like scrims are a little fake news, very fake news in North America, this very split. News, uh, but news. like, you know, like, do you think there's any level of that where it's like, okay, they have like a bit of a weird split, but the team itself is still like insane. Yeah, I still think that like when they actually look good, they look absolutely incredible, right? Yeah. Um, especially like if Hansam and Mickey can get control over the bot side, you see like the Draven Nautilus as it came out. I don't know how Nikki or Mickey had landed half these hooks. Like it was absolutely insane. Yeah. Like I think there was a huge amount where they can try and play around that stuff. It's just a case of how frequently they can get it up and rolling. And that's kind of the big question, especially when you're playing against some of the top teams of the world. Like it's it's a different level again. Yeah, and it's funny because the way the LEC system works, so they already qualified for worlds because um, MSI. Uh, for MSI, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> the script has already been released. Oh, you move there it is. Uh, they already qualified for MSI because of the fact that they won winter. And so when they moved on to the spring split, it's like kind of a conflicting goal. Like you're working towards MSI clearly, right? You're trying to see make yourself the best presentable team going into MSI so you're ready to win a championship. So then there's a little bit of like how much of the comps that you're running is experimental. There's also not as much pressure. Yeah, that too. So if you're losing, it's not much as like, no, we actually need an emergency meeting and get our shit together versus, oh, like it's not as the, the red alarms are not blaring. Like we're still going to MSI. We still believe in ourselves kind of thing. So it's like, yes, you still want to win the spring championship. That's not in question. But it's more like, how pressured are you in that situation when you were already qualified? Yeah, I do think, though, they took it fairly hard because I think mm. Caps, I don't know the exact number, but he played an absurd amount of solo queue literally okay. the day after. Yeah. It was like 24 hours he played like 20 games or so, like some ridiculous mm. number. That's so I definitely think it's hard. North American pros, like, oh, I'm going to grind. You play 10 games. <laughs> uh, so 
obviously though you're still feeling good about g2 getting through yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so. i mean i think it's just the side that well sorry to bring it back but i think the side they're on does make it a little bit easier yeah where it's like as you say loud i think looked pretty good with brute coming in i'm a bit sad that we're missing brunson to be honest but yeah uh, he was a lot of fun but yeah i think with just the side of the bracket that they have it feels inevitable that they should get through but yeah, yeah. the only question for me is whether they're going to come in uh first or second seed only because i have a lot of faith in psg right now mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to get too in deep with them but like i think psg just watching their games are really clean and I'm excited for Junjia finally getting out of EDG. <laughs> He's been unleashed, <laughs> so now he gets to actually perform on a team as a as a mainstay on the roster. And mechanically, he's insane. Yeah, I, I think we should get into it a little bit actually okay. then, because there's only three spots yeah. for these uh, eight teams. Oh, true. So if you're saying that G2 might lose to PSG, that means that if Golden Guardians lost to BLG, or maybe Golden Guardians beat BLG, someone's gonna have to beat G2 to get in, or yeah. G2 is gonna knock someone else oh, out. So right. like, uh, you know. I think the safe bet is BLG G2 through winners and Golden Guardians through losers maybe against PSG or whatever. But, like, do, do you see an upset potential there? Do you think PSG has, has what it takes? I don't think it's an upset. I think PSG would win. I actually am really... Do you think they're better than Golden Guardians? Yeah. They're just better than G2 as well? Well, no, I think G2 is going through. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen, but, like, I don't have to worry about it right so now. I, think PSG. I actually think the one thing for PSG talent I'm not certain on is... Junj is very good at his like tanks and his like facilitating style, right? Yeah. But I think if we actually do start to swap over to hey, you have to play carry junglers, mm. that's not where Junja likes at all. Like I think he's got like a 33% win rate on Nidalee and all these kind of things. Like he does not want to be the one that carries, he wants to set up the carries and do his thing and be the engager, and then he's happy out. So, In solo queue, that was his win rate, or is it just competitive? Uh, he's competitive. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Because like funny enough, at least from solo queue, this this is dated. This is probably like back in last year or the year before, yeah. but like on solo queue, he was a bit of a demon when it came to carry junglers. So I always felt like he was more, it was more of an issue of, oh, the team needs you to be on these facilitating junglers. Which was true on EDG, definitely. Yeah. So I think personally, I have a lot of faith in him individually. When he's able to perform some stupid combos on Sejuani, I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> this is a carry player who's being forced on the deck. <laughs> so I'm quite excited for the team. Um, and I think. Now that I actually have to think about the fact that there are three seeds that only get to go to the next stage, then as much as I'm talking up Golden Guardians, yeah, I think PSG's no. favorite here. I was wrong, by the way. He's a 25% win rate on Kindred, but he's a 66% win rate on Italy. There like, it is! Over, over three games. Don't tell me the numbers. You didn't have to say that much. <laughs> you uh, so PSG for me, they were the hands down most boring team to watch in VOD review. Like... I think the meta concerns really exist for this team, yeah. but they also just play such a slow <laughs> way. Like they have very talented carries. Yeah. Like Wako is, is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Yubao actually, some of his Tristana play was like amazing and stuff, but like they don't do a lot. Like, you know, like you said, Junji is running around the map, trying to make sure things are stable as they scale into mid to late game. They have like the lowest combined kills per minute of any team except uh, maybe... I think they are just... I the think they actually are the lowest. Yeah. I think that uh, like even like, there's like one team over them, like slower in, yeah. in like LCK somewhere, but like they're insanely slow. They don't make plays happen. Their games take forever to close out. Their drafts are not interesting. It's mm -hmm. not even like they're doing anything tricky. Their drafts are so straightforward. Yeah. Like I, I worry... Like, do you have other things if things are not going well? Like, do, do you have any other kind of play style? Because, like, okay, if you can just grind people out, great. But they weren't even, like, that insane in the regular season at, at doing that either. Mm -hmm. uh, even in, like, their, their win rate. I think they were 12 and 6 in the regular season. So, like, five losses. Or I think it was, like, uh, I think it was just three losses. But. I think it was something else. Junjia had um, not lost the game. Because, like, basically, uh, Junjia, when he joined in the regular season, was lossless and then during the playoffs they started losing a little bit of course might be thinking of someone else then might be thinking of someone else <laughs> but like for me with uh i'm definitely trolling I think of psg <laughs> so like they actually they had a great regular season the only other team that was was uh like right behind was frank yeah um and then dr going into the playoffs yes they had dropped some games junja was just deathless in the final series yeah. and yes they were slow but i will judge a team's ability to play like adapt on okay you guys are playing slow but are you playing to the right side and are you respecting the enemy team? There was one time where they were getting invaded top side and I thought that Yuba did a great job at like moving. So they're not the ones pressing for something and they are scaling, but if they are getting invaded on, then they will collapse for it. Yeah. Like those are the things that I like. The Rift Trail play was the cleanest of all of the, um, you know, play in teams. I think Gen um, 
Golden Guardians are the team that I'm like, okay, that's going to be close. But I was impressed with their Rift Trial play. I was impressed with their team fighting. I think Wako is, is a really good AD carry. Uh, I already spoke up Junjia. Archer is someone that, or Azir, depending on the, like, you know, there's going to be a, a few ways I haven't checked the pronunciation guy yet. I'm actually, I don't I tried to pull <laughs> it up. Today, I tried yeah. to pull it up and I don't have access. So, <laughs> it's funny. Beautiful. <laughs> in the PCS, they would say Azir. So, they should say, they should say Azir. But, like, I would imagine in China, they would say Azir because of the inflection, how you'd say certain things. Um, like for instance, I, I would talk to Clement. It's it's a it's a yeah. long thing, Amen. but I should say Azu. I should say Azu because they call it Azu. Um, he's a great team fighter, and so um, he's generally just been a tank facilitator, like top laner, Nar uh, and Cassante and all this stuff, right? So there's not a lot of like different play styles and not a lot of flex <laughs> carries <laughs> top side um it's chicken burger room back here. <laughs> kind of but he was beating the best carry player in the in those finals and then of course in his team fights he was like a reason for why they were winning a lot of team fights so i think psg is a clean team obviously you can't really judge how they'll play internationally based off of the competition in the pcs but i'm high on them that's the big, the big question for me is just, I really like their team fighting. It's just a case of like, can they do anything besides team fighting? Because mm. if you look, I was just, I think 40% of the games they have uh, Drake, like Drake buff. Yeah. And their games are like some of the longest. And it feels like it's a case of, well, we're waiting for a dragon before we fight. We don't really know what we're doing with map states in the, like the mid to late game. Mm. Um, and they'll just keep like, they'll shove a wave and then just group me and then shove a wave. And then we don't actually do very much with it. So I'm curious to see if they do go up against a team that like, you end up taking that slow if they can find ways to come back into it and maybe they can collapse on the side or whatever. It's just, I'm curious to see what happens when they do play against a team that's better at playing on the map. Yeah, and in all, speaking of the map stuff, like they got a couple of Barons snuck against them in, in their playoffs run. Like yeah. there, there were some things like that, picks after Baron. It just didn't seem super clean to me and it felt like, okay, you're better than most of the people in your region and you can just like slow roll them like TSM used to do like six years ago. And it's like, that was not a particularly impressive play style that translated well. So like, that's kind of my concern. I think uh, we'll see how much of this is a, a legitimate concern yeah. in their series versus DFM because DFM is like the polar opposite in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where they're like crazy draft picks, super aggressive. They were taking inhibitor turrets and inhibitors pre-20 minutes in their in their final series. They're busting out Blitzcrank, like Harp's crazy. Yeah. So like, Harp's I, really fun. I feel like this will be a great test for PSG to be like, can you make this work kind of more globally? Yeah, not like DFM or like world beaters or anything, but like yeah. we've seen them put up I feel decent like the show. benchmark. Yeah. yeah, they're like for a minor region team, yeah. they're one of the best. And so like it'll show if PSG can kind of grind people out here. Yeah. That's who they play first. That's why I brought of up course, DFM. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, so I'm interested. I, I think whenever it comes to teams that are really like si singular in how they play the game, they're not really dynamic in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. It's like, okay, how good at you, are you at that? Yeah. PSG is a really good team fighting team. Um, and their setup around objectives was, is really clean. There was one, there was one or a few, like a few plays that I noticed where it's like, okay, they had their line of scrimmage set up around Drake, and LeBlanc was trying to get some poke down, like enemy LeBlanc. Yeah. So it just pops her, her head over the wall once, and it was instantly Sid Body Alt and get her, <laughs> get her. <laughs> kill her. I was like, oh shit, that would not happen in North America. I'm sorry. Like that LeBlanc would get some chunk off and would back away. No one would be ready for that. Um, so I do think their ability, like their individual skill in fighting, is great. But I, I, I think the points on how they play the map is is very fair. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll see. I guess that's that's what we feel like is the spot for the the last one, maybe between Golden Guardians and them. Is there another team that jumps out at you as a, a potential option? Uh, loud, movie star, <laughs> Gam. Yeah. I don't know. Gam is a tough one because we kind of opened it up, opened the floor up with like, oh, Golden Guardians versus Gam. And at first I was like, oh yeah, okay, Golden Guardians will get past th this group. But then I forgot about it, even if they do get past this group, like what's going to happen in the last chance qualifiers. Um, no, Gam's a, Gam's a really crazy team. Uh, I mean, we say this every time. It's like, it, it, I'm actually surprised that I'm surprised every time I watch their yeah. games. And I'm like, there's always a fight. <laughs> there's, a, there's always a fight. It's not, it's not really like clean. It's like, oh, this guy made a mistake. He overstayed this mid lane and now Levi's just killed him. <laughs> or, or, oh, it's actually now because of that, uh, they know where the jungler is. The enemy jungler has now killed the enemy, like somebody on the bot side of the map. And it's like always action. It's not clean, but they're another example of very basically with, with PSG of like, they're still a really talented team fighting team and they will defend or take every fight. 
So it's like, even if it doesn't work for them, and it didn't kind of work for them in the finals where they lost the game because when they were behind, they just defended and took the next fight instead of playing this opposite side of the map. So that's a concern with me with GAM. But honestly, most of the time when we go into international events, teams will just take fights anyways um, and then lose those fights. So I think there's a chance of this going the distance, Golden Guardians and GAM, like game three. And of course, no matter what, BLG is going to win whoever be <laughs> wins that series. So we're going to see another. <laughs> Don't count Bong versus Bing. That <laughs> That's what I'm just we're getting a long Golden Guardians versus Gam series, guys. <laughs> I think I do think though for Gam, I think the format change is super interesting for this team specifically because like what I really like about Gam is they just bring out all these weird and wacky picks. Like we saw that was an MSI last year, wasn't they? Brought it like Zach Mid and everything like that against G two. Um, that was a um, uh, uh, Saigon. Yeah. That was was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Same region. Like, yeah, yeah. BCS always has yeah. the weird. And like even looking at the, the champion picks here, you got like Zillion mid, they're playing Ziggs bot, they've got like um the Nocturne in the jungle and all that yeah. kind of stuff. They're willing to rumble as well. They're willing to bring out weird wacky picks. And I think that works very well in a best of one format where you can surprise someone with a pick. Yeah. But I don't know how that then calculates over the course of a best of three. If it's like, oh well, maybe this is now gonna make a difference. Well, last year when they went up against Top Esports and Top Esports had a really bad draft, like Oh, in comparative to what Gam had, Gam had completely won the draft, and that Karthus pick was <laughs> actually the most devastating thing. I'm gonna watch that back and then have nightmares, uh, basically. <laughs> um, so yes, they're a team that is really aware of if they're favored or not favored versus a team, and then mix it up, like you said. So I think they will surprise us in some way, shape, or form, and it's just dependent on Golden Guardians within the draft being flexible enough, and then playing, oh, like basically just playing smart across the map. Like, that just comes down to discipline. And it's gonna be tough in your first tournament when you're not aware of who you're going up against at all. Like you maybe you know you're going up against Gam, but you never played against them. These players generally view the game being strictly played in one way, and then you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> like yeah. so. Well, they're like they're, they're always the team that's like cheating tempo. So like if you're like, yeah. oh well, they can't do this because this wave is here. Like no, nah. no, nah, they'll do it. <laughs> nah, man, right. We were in your jungle for three minutes. <laughs> uh, Levi's crazy, of course. I'm really excited to see him back um, with Gam. Yeah. Uh, given that he's kind of like the guy who launched the VCS into kind of international recognition way back in the day. Yeah. 2017, beating TSM. Bit of, bit of a grudge match, NA versus Levi, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know. I don't think history will repeat itself, though. I'm pretty confident in, in Golden Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other first round series that you guys want to hit on? Um, we touched on PSG DFM a little bit. We could go harder on that. Loud versus G2, I think, deserves a little bit of, of conversation. Yeah, I think it's gonna. It, that's one that's going to be incredibly interesting. I think Loud as well. I like, as I said already, I think I'm a bit sad that they got rid of Brunson. Yeah. I thought Brunson was a lot of fun. I even, like, be playing up against Fnatic last year as well, or, yeah, they end up having those um, massive upsets against Fnatic, where, like, they're actually able to take the game off of you. They forced that big, weird tiebreaker as well yeah. at Worlds. It's like, it was a lot of fun, but I, I think the... The fact they've got Root playing as well as he is as well is going to help out. The fact that they're able to fall back to this guy so consistently yeah. is going to be a massive one for them. Um... And then again, if you're able to just control the bot lane against G2, where you're playing against Mickey and Hans in the way that Leo would like to, I think that could cause a bit of an issue for them. Yeah. I think Broken Blade will have a very good series. <laughs> because... You don't, you don't have faith in Robo? It's not so much Robo as a player, it's the choices that he makes in the game. This man is hamburgers. not a laner. Yeah. <laughs> he leaves that lane and he just lets those minions die. <laughs> he is like, I will be watching these games and I'm like, Wait, we're full grouping for this Drake? It's our first Drake. <laughs> There's a level five Malphite running down the river. <laughs> like, this is kind of wild. Like, I, this should not be allowed. Like, it's more valuable to give this Drake up and play for turrets, but he's not doing that. Another example would be, um, it was like a, a definitive game in the series. Um, I think it was versus Pain, where he just like, after he got first pushed down as Jax versus Nar, he just left. He left top. He like invaded initially, saw no one there, saw the enemy jungle go mid, so he went mid. And then like the play kind of worked out, not really, he didn't get a kill. So he then went deeper into the enemy jungle to find Sejuani on wolves. I'm like, dude, Nar is pushing top lane, you are losing minions and you're not getting a kill. <laughs> like, I, so he wants, it, it seems like this happens a lot in um, CBLOL historically, but like it's present in these games too, where it's like they are looking for plays. They want a team fight. They believe in their ability to team fight. That's what got them there. But when the team is not willing to fight them and match them on a Drake, they're like, oh, did we just lose gold on the map? <laughs> we, like, okay, Broken Blade, who's on another carry top lane, is now going to get ahead. And they're going to play through Broken Blade. In my opinion, they should in this series. 
So I'm worried for Loud only because I think this is a bad matchup for them. Um, unless if their scrims are learning to play a little bit more respectfully. Here, here's the the Brazil hoping angle. Though. I'm ready for this. Uh, European top suck. That, I got a memo about that from Reddit about how you, you're... <laughs> you're yeah, it's just... I mean, comparatively to LPL and LCK, yeah, it's not great. Well, what about <laughs> relative to Brazil? You think uh, going to give you... You can just say no to this one. No. <laughs> okay, because that's so yeah. hard to be nice. Yeah. No, well, I was gonna say because like Robo sometimes he busts out the Olaf. He also plays a lot of Jacks. Like he does play some of the carries, and Tinones is more like supportive in some ways. Like Talia's is mostly champion. I yeah. think Croc is very happy to camp lanes and stuff like that. So like, there's times where Robo he he does roam a lot, but I don't want to make it sound like that's all he does. Because there, there's does. games where he just like dives turret relentlessly yes. against his opponent when he yes. gets the leads. Like. There's a world in a best of three, or I don't know if it exists or not, where like Broken Blade is not playing well, and like there's a counter pick that's good for for Robo, and maybe maybe he does something, but like yeah. I wouldn't bet on it. But yeah. maybe maybe that's an yeah. Angle. I think it's just because there's always, ever since Kaboom, there's always been that chance with Cibolo to just do it and just like complete the upset, and even like uh, Worlds the same with Fnatic, you saw it as well. You just can never ever count out Cibolo because there's always just that chance they're going to come in absolutely swinging. Yeah. Now I think well, this is also a very different style that we're seeing from Cibolo though, because when you look back in the day, it was a hyper aggressive, like you'd have BRTT's Draven just trying to run you down all the time. Whereas when you look at these guys, they're like third slowest in the league, mm -hmm. like they don't play anywhere near as fast as you'd expect traditionally from what we've seen from the Brazilians on the the main stage. So yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see how they do match up but I do agree I think Robo with the way he plays is actually well nearly kind of similar to Adam in a way that we had with BDS oh, yeah. now these two never faced like G2 and BDS never faced off in the best of um, but it does kind of remind me of him to a certain of Adam to a certain extent where it is that kind of hey I'm just going to drop a wave roam and then make a play elsewhere so it had it worked for a while in EU I mean <laughs> it yeah. could it could work out here against EU as well yeah maybe I also think uh, Rat was, was quite good uh, in the scaling champions like one of the reasons they're slow is because like we're waiting for him to pop off yeah, and get the three true. items on Aphelios and, and Zary and stuff Zary. yeah so uh, Loud probably not going to make it happen other first round matchups <laughs> BLG versus Rainbow Seven. Movie yeah. Star Rainbow Seven. I guess we can just gas up BLG for people who haven't been watching as the LPL yeah. EU combo <laughs> combo rep. We all, I'm, I'm only in it. Like, what is the rest of the world? I'm an American here. Like, and uh, no, I am super hyped for BLG. Uh, Bean is an absolute beast. I mean, the guy first ever pentakill in World Finals on the Fiora, obviously from years ago. He's just insane in the top side as well like oh he's like solo killing 369 in their series he's looking absolutely incredible like consistently beating the guy that we were all talking about as the best top player in the world last year and um, i think as well yago i actually expected yago to massively fail coming into this team because he's just come out of jdg and it was yeah. like a, okay well he's always been at least in my eyes a consistently an a to a plus player but it's very very rare you get the s to s plus moments out of him yeah. and like there's one in 2020 when he's on lucian that stands out to me but like and then maybe every so often have a zoe game because that was his old main but like there weren't yeah, the these exception big ones. that proves the rule that you yeah. can remember two yeah <laughs> exactly that's what i mean right yeah so i think that's where I'm, when i look at yago i was like this guy isn't going to do so hot but it feels like he's really found his footing especially with shun in the jungle because yeah. he wants to play the vagars he wants to play the Galios and kind of be that supportive player for Sean. That's the thing about Yagao that he, even domestically, always kind of under-respected yeah. as a player. When he first came in 2018 alongside Knight, people just expected, um, you know, people, I myself included, <laughs> would be like, yeah, Knight's the next great, right? <laughs> you have a league of uh, doing B, rookie, like some of the best um, mids in the world, you add Knight. Um, and Yaga was always the person who was who's there, who played well. He had great games, like his Jace, Zoe, and like you mentioned a few of those, like his Galios and stuff like that. But like, and then you, and then he would just be on teams that were still winning. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I came to respect him as a glue for his team. Yeah. Like he recognized what were the maps, kind of a little bit like um, um, I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's like the same idea with the Mad Lion situation, their mid, Nisky, mid jungle Nisky, situation, yeah, yeah. like with Niski, where it's like, like. He will always be under-respected because he is playing for what is the winning part of the map. He's playing for his jungler. He's playing for uh, the side lanes. And they are winning games off that. He has a winning mentality. And, I, and that's something that it took me some time to really like value. Yeah, people like him, I, I really appreciate his, his play style. And I'm glad he actually made it back after like people crapped on him at Worlds yeah. for the performance that they, he had. Mm -hmm. um, 
and like kind of justifiably so, but like I would always go too far as like not just crapping on him for that tournament, but then like retroactively going back and be like, yeah. you know, he's not that good. He was never that good for all yeah. the reasons you guys kind of were talking about that he's like not this standout player, but players like this do so much to help your team that you just don't see and appreciate. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing that stands out about Niski that makes him like kind of, he's done it on a bunch of teams. Yes. Because you can't just be like, oh, well, it's because he's playing with these other guys. Like, he was, like, Yagao was hooked up with Kanavi, and everyone, I think, you know, kind of just, like, painted them as this duo in their head. Yeah. Whereas Niski's now done it with a bunch of different teammates and stuff, and I think that that's kind of allowed him to get his own name as this kind of, like, team first play style. But there's there's a lot of mid laners over the course of, like, the history of League of Legends who just, like, didn't get their due because they didn't play, like, the Zeds and, like, the crazy 1v9 yeah. stuff. And I, I think it's cool that he's, he's back on the international stage again. I think as well there's also, like, you're in a league with Doombie who just takes that and just knocks it he up to like 10. Yeah. So you're like, when you want someone who's got to like, oh, I roam and I play for the team, like you immediately go to Doombie. You don't think <laughs> yeah. that I get him. So it's just like... But he's so, like, well, I'm not going to play Malphite and Nautilus mid, but I'm still going to roam, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm not an extremist here. <laughs> Calm down. Like, I'll play <laughs> Talia and do it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is why to a certain extent, but I think he's such a perfect fit for a guy like Shun because Shun came in was I, IG originally with like the Shy and Rookie and he looked reasonably okay but it was also a case of like he was a carry jungler that if you're on IG you gotta play for the lanes like this just not gonna happen yeah. any other way so I think he kind of got brushed aside a little bit and it's nice to see especially as he's starting to come back and he's aiming to bring out like the Kindred that's a perma ban for him like that has been a big thing when you look towards playoffs uh, and having Yaga there to kind of help support him in that way I still think he's still got a lot to learn like he can be a bit coin flippy at times yeah um, and then speaking of coin flip, be like, I cannot believe how good Elk is. Like when I, because <laughs> when I looked at 2020, he used to be called Jomung. We used to call it Jomung Madness, which was just like randomly he would int the lane, like for no reason whatsoever. And we talk about Morgan, who used to be his top laner on WE. Yes. And we're like, Morgan couldn't TB back to lane because he had to keep it for when Jomung tried to int bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, he was like, I have got to go down 20 CS because I know I need this TP at some stage to save our bot lane and oh. save the game. Like that's how, that's how weird and wacky it was was down there but the fact that elk has just stepped up to be absolutely incredible like this area in particular he's looked splendid on it's crazy to me that suddenly he's gone from someone who can be so back and forth to actually consistently putting out these great plays and i think that's why they're looking so good at the moment is because elk has just had this massive step up and then on as well was also someone that was quite um back and forth in the Sunin days as well yeah and um, like there was obviously the jokes on off um yeah but he would like mechanically he was always very very good but it was just about trying to get the right read on when he should try and make these plays that was a bit iffy but it just feels like for blg there's been a lot of step ups but also just kind of people getting the the respect that they're going to do at this stage yeah it's funny when when on first came on it was always like oh you're directly comparing him to sword art yeah directly because like that's who he came in for when just sword art left. As well. exactly yeah. so like a lot of these comparisons were made and then it only felt, felt like this split or this year where you're like coming to respect how he plays the game so much more. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for what BLG is going to do in the tournament, uh, uh, going on in the tournament. I think what you said earlier about them being like a dark knight um, is very true because everyone's going to talk about all the other LPL and LCK teams. <laughs> and then it, it feels like you're just saying, because even BLG weren't expected to be here. Uh, they expected EDG. Um, but they're a team that, for sure, were just were on this much more on the same page, had more explosive players, and on I think were just, was just a great engaged support. So, and and again, just being as so damn yeah, good. Good. he's, so he's probably the most good. deserving of, of conversation, yeah. but he always gets it. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. But I think that's like, especially when I look towards. I think Zayas is an incredibly strong top laner, but there is he has fumbled in a lot of the finals that have come up, right? And yeah. even when you look at the most recent finals, sticking him back on Zion duty instead of putting who's supposed to be this incredible carry top laner onto a Jace or something, you can kind of tell they weren't most comfortable in him either. So I think if you're in a situation where Bane has already manhandled 369 to a certain extent, and then if Zayas isn't showing up, well then you and Doran did a much better job in playoffs, but also not the strongest. Right. I actually think there is a world where with no real nerfs to the champions that Bin wants to play, he can still just pop the hell off. And I think that's a lot of what makes BLG so threatening is that Yago on this kind of roaming style can play for both the side lanes and have these both just pop the hell off at any point in time. Yeah. Plus, they'll be getting extra game time on 13.8 against relatively weaker opponents that you think they'll find their mojo on a little yeah. bit, you know. Um, very interesting stuff. Guns to our heads, we're all saying 
we're all saying Golden Guardians make it through, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We were all BLG saying BLG second season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Golden God. Guardians. <laughs> Licorice Man handles Ben. You know, then we go and oh, then yeah, BLG has a hard fought battle versus PSG. Like that's we were saying, Licorice, that's why Licorice didn't show any of his carry performers until he you know got to the end of playoffs true. because he was saving them for me. Saving, that's yeah. true. Yeah, smart. Uh, but yeah, I think is, you guys have any updates that you want to predict? For the for the playing stage. The only one I have is actually PSG. Now that I think about that qualifying match, so that's that's the big one. Everything else seems like it makes sense. I think people will always be surprised at um, how volatile best of threes can get. Because if you take the first game, then you're just one game away. Yeah, so, you can cheese them once, yeah. something bad goes in uh, two, it's over. Yeah. yeah. If you guys are down, I kind of want to move on to the main one though, because I actually have yeah. a genuine question for you okay. on this like upset thing. How confident are you guys in Cloud Nine? Because when I watch this team. I think m s is an absolute beast. Yes. And then sometimes I just look at him and he W's in on the block into an Ari and I'm like, God, what are you doing? But I think in general, he's very, very good. I think he can match up against a lot of the guys. And Cloud9 genuinely look pretty damn clean. Like uh, this is probably the like the strongest, I think, a uh, team coming out of North America has looked in a while. I think they mm-hmm. look really good. Mm-hmm. What do you think, uh, Mark? Ah, <laughs> uh, so... I said something similar about like, I think this is one of the better teams we've sent in yeah. a long time. But yes. I also to have said that before and like, I still believe it was true, but it doesn't mean that like, we're yeah. gonna win best of five suddenly yeah. against Korea or uh, LPL, you know? Like, so I, I think I can, I, I hope people don't think that's being two-faced when you say like, they're really good. They're a really yeah. good North American team. Yeah, That still means that they're gonna have to punch above their weight class to actually win because this is best of fives now. This isn't like, you pull off a couple best of one upsets and suddenly you're like in an easier bracket stage now yeah. the way like no offense to sometimes that teams have made good runs and then lost in finals from other regions you know like we did it in 2016 a little bit where it was flash wolves that we had to beat to make finals you know like it, it can happen where a good best of one stage sets you up for a really nice tournament that doesn't exist anymore you can't yeah. like be hot have a good meta read and like <laughs> So then win a full yeah. series <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so like um, I, I think in that sense you know like if Cloud9 can win a best of five against an Eastern team, that's amazing. Even if they don't win the tournament, obviously. And even just beating Mad and stuff like that, which I think is very doable, like that would be a a win for me. Like I'm a North American fan. I'm not like chasing the crown right now. I just want to have a good tournament. That that defines a good tournament to me. And I think this team is good enough to to do some of those. They could pull off an upset. I wouldn't bet on it, but they, they could. Um, I, they, will they run the whole bracket off upsets? No, that's yeah. that's where it's yeah. it's a, it's a long tournament for that. This was a crazy season where I I agree with you. I think this is one of the best teams we're sending, if not the best team. And just because, like we said that for Worlds last year with how dominant C nine was, and but then they got group of death kind of. They got yeah that, and also they had a really wrong read on the meta as well. So like they just started off just getting swung at. <laughs> so uh, this time around, I think. Like, I have a faith, like, just from hearing from the players about, like, their takeaways from Worlds and how they don't want that to ever happen again. And I look at Fudge, best top player in the league, by, who's by quite a bit. Um, Blabber, same there. MNS would have gotten first team all pro if he played throughout the full season. Um, like, that top side of the map is incredible. And we're not even talking about Zerker and Sven. So that team, individually, really good. Um, so the question a lot of the time is, yes, we think this is the best team. I just want to see how they do versus a Gen G, JDG, T1. Like, I'm expecting a loss. How bad is the loss? Because that just means that I'm more demoralized. <laughs> or I'm pretty f- happy about the future. You're happy with a 2-3 loss, like a WE type series? Oh, that sounds C9 great quarters. to me. <laughs> yeah. Like that, I'm sleeping good. <laughs> if I lose 3-2, sure, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. Like crying, pissing, vomiting, <laughs> everything at the same time. Please win this series. And then if we lose, there's obviously 10 minutes grace period of being depressed. <laughs> and then past that being like, you know what? That was the best thing I've seen. Better than depression from, you know, first blood game one. You yes. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so the range of emotions will be there, but consistently I'll land back to, if we lose three, two, uh, or if even if we just have a competitive three-one loss, like if it actually feels like, oh, we were in there all of these games, and it, just a small bit of adjustment can make the difference. I'm happy. 
Yeah. Um, so that's how I come out of it. Yeah, they have a lot of threats across the board. Mm-hmm. They have been good about metas. Uh, it's obviously, I don't think like a Nidalee Kazakh's type meta is really Blabber's bread and butter. He's a little bit more farm oriented, I think, than yeah. some of those. But like. And also, I'm very skeptical of Nidalee Kazakh's being the meta. No matter, like, if they buff them to a large degree, great. I know he Kazakh's received quite a few buffs. Yeah. Same with Nidalee. But it always comes down to. Oh, well, I mean, as long as you can protect your jungler. <laughs> yeah, I just see a lot of people spamming it in solo queue, yeah. which is why I'm like, eh. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, once again, I agree with you, though. Um, but I, I'm really excited for this team. There's always the Jace incident that everyone will remember from an MS. Like, that will just come out there where he's like, okay, he had a one day. A record setting day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one day, guys. <laughs> but past that, uh, this makes for a really exciting team. So, uh, I'm excited. Good question. Love that. Oh, what, what about you? <laughs> what do you think? I I don't like. That's why I wanted to try and figure out because I'm mm-hmm. like I'm super excited to see uh, more of MNS because yeah. even like before he made it to LCS, like I I don't know if you guys were the same. You go on to ga- Game of Legends and yeah. then you just see like this guy who's got like everyone else is like six fifty damage per minute for mid lane and then he's like eight hundred and two as <laughs> average. You're like, oh yeah, well he's only played like two games. Sure, and you click in, it's like thirty five games. And you're like, he's like every solo kill. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh. And you're like, oh okay, this guy's actually kind of legit. So it's nice to see these fan at home, and he kind of yeah. gets to see part of that the ups and the downs. Well, let, let me give you the doomer angle then because okay. we've been good. Uh, no he's volatile, team. so like yeah. he's very volatile. So when things are going well he will smurf his opponent. When things are going poorly, he will still try and smurf on his opponent and he'll die 10 times like on the Jays game. True. Like that's just kind of the player he is and like, you know, the the, the pool is just going to go up around him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> him him and Blabber don't have like insane synergy mm-hmm. together. Like they, they do yeah. play well, um, but Sven had some troubles in playoffs yeah. uh, in, in the finals a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I do think there's like cracks in this team that like you could see like in a carry lane getting exploited or against like a faker get like yeah. whoever you know like some of these like night it, yeah. it, it can all happen so like there are these weaknesses we saw fudge despite being the best north american top laner last split as well we said the exact same things you put him up in the international competition and he couldn't play the same champions the same yeah. way so those so, all those concerns still exist i saw your smirk kind of, i'm waiting <laughs> the description that you were giving to mns reminded me of a question and interest that i had about another player as yamato would say what about Hilly Baba though? <laughs> <laughs> Hilly Baba. <laughs> what about like, like this Mad Lions team, I was the same. Where I was at first being like, guys, if they win a series, lose in the finals, go to like MSI, that sucks. But then they just started destroying people. And a lot of it was off of Hilly Pike, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> and also just the team playing around it. So like, actually a question for you, just to turn it on you a little bit about Mad Lions. Um, like, what's your thoughts on the team so far? Because Hillisan is playing insanely well, and then Chasey is a top laner that I'm I, I've always been really interested in because he plays carry types, yeah. but he seems like on and off. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think the there was kind of a bit of a perfect storm for Mad Lions as mm-hmm. well coming into playoffs. Like, and not to put them down, I think they had a phenomenal time, and I do think a lot of that was obviously Hilly stepping up. But yeah. um, just funny story. <laughs> Someone wrote to me on Twitter one of the days and was like, oh yeah, you can tell that Dagd is new because he's still surprised when Hilly ends. So it's like, because in the run up to playoffs, it was not looking good. You'd have him like wandering through River Nautilus, getting caught out and stuff yeah. like that. But I think there was a massive step up pretty much across the board coming into towards playoffs. Um, Niski, I think, was fee- was one of the guys who figured out Gragas and is a phenomenal Gragas player, a lot yeah. which helped out. And I think it made, these kind of things made it very difficult to draft against them because you didn't want to give them things like the Gragas. You're still worried about some of the big power picks on the patch like yeah. the the, uh, the Annie, you don't want to give Karzi Jinx because he's mm-hmm. happy to just ultra scale into the late game on it. So I think that, was, and then you've obviously got some of these cool picks like the Pike coming through for Hilly that just made it very difficult. And even they just kind of went back to, we're going to make sure that Hilly's comfortable. We're not going to go for any of the Lulus or anything like that. We're like, mm-hmm. we're going to play Rels with Zeri. We're going to go for things where he can engage and he can be the big playmaker. Yeah. And I think that just made Hilly feel way more comfortable. Um, and then looking towards their mid jungle, I think we got to actually see Niski and Elioia working better together. Because even in game one, I want to say, of their first round of playoffs, I think it was, they had like Lissandra Vi, and you never saw the two of them interact at any point. So, I mean, it's like, you literally have some of the easiest setup in the world. Like, yeah. you just go in and you kill them. But there was just none of that. But as it went on, we got to see it kind of clean up and looking so much better. Um, from Chasey's perspective, in the beginning... Jace would still, if you're playing him Jace or something like that, he yeah. would still get these early leads. It's actually funny enough you mentioned you know, Yamato, a conversation we had in the green room with Yamato where he's like, I don't feel like you need to ban Chase's Jace. 
because even if he gets these leads, he never is the one that makes the game or breaks the game. And even he get picks like the Fiora and you yeah. get these leads, but he, Mad Lions wouldn't really know how to play around him on the map and they'd still default to team fights and wouldn't look that hot. Yeah. But whatever whatever the hell Chase hit that day, I have no idea because that finals, he popped the hell up. And it was so good to see because especially you're new to the LEC, yes. you're playing on this roster for the first time and you're in the last couple of games of finals and he's able to step up and go, no, I can actually carry this on a Cassante, on a Jace yeah. and really be that threat. So it actually filled me with a lot of confidence now going into uh, MSI yeah. that like Chase, he can match up and play these carry top laners, but also be a carry when he does get into that position. It's funny. It, it, it feels like it's a consistent thing with top laners, like carry top laners that are imports where they're obviously English is going to be something that's a little weaker for them. So then when you have a lead, you want to be the most vocal. You want to let your team know how like like how to play around you, what basically what timing is best to work around your jungler. Um, but a lot of the times if you have like a stronger voice on your team or like if you don't know how to necessarily say what you want, I'm not I'm just assuming maybe too much on that front, but I know just generally speaking like the the stronger voices ultimately dictate how the game flows. Um, and if and of course, the fact that he's new. That's another thing too that comes into it where people don't necessarily feel comfortable just overriding call and say, guys, come top lane permanently, dive them in at three, five, seven, like, like come. Uh, or like, hey, I'm playing, it's better to play off of my top side other than what my dual lane, who is probably crying and saying, guys, like the game, we're getting destroyed here, I can't move. Um, so like knowing how to play around a, a, a carry top laner that isn't necessarily comfortable in, the, in those environments is always gonna be difficult. But like, Chasey is somebody that for me can be that main difference maker. We talk about a lot of, like great top laners coming into this tournament and Chasey I feel like can match them. Um, and it's more about like how you basically convert your lead a lot of the times that I'm interested in. So that's a, that's a great conversation. Uh, and I'm interested to see if Mad Lions develop to be more than just like, oh, Hilly is at it. <laughs> and, and, and same with the mid jungle. And if Chasey starts to really be able to like elevate in mid to late games, that's a damn good team. Yeah, they damn good enough to pick up some wins in the bracket stage. How, I, I said for C9, I, I am skeptical. It's possible, but skeptical. Uh, unless we're talking about like inner region between EU yeah, and NA yeah. or, or maybe coming someone else if they, they show up, if, if like a PSG showed up through, through the uh, playing stage. Where, where do you think about MAD and G2, you're pretty confident it's making it through. So like in yeah. bracket stage of, of the main portion, what, do, what are you thinking is a reasonable expectation for, for EU fans? I I think it's fairly similar, obviously to Cloud Nine. Like I, I think it's a case of you go, you're going up against the big boys. Like Gen G are no pushovers. The fact they play such a slow game as well, yeah. they're very calculated. It makes it very difficult. Where if you make a mistake, they're going to pounce on you in a second. Yeah. Whereas it's obviously the complete flip. I feel like with JDG and T1, which is we're just going to you know go in all guns blazing and test you and can you try and match up. Now I think the maybe for Mad Lines you can get some opportunities to pull it back because i think personally for like t1 i don't think their objective setup is particularly good and i think that could be where they fumble and you end up in a best of five pulling the game back that you shouldn't have maybe that yeah. can be a difference maker and I, I think that goes for both mad nine Cl mad cloud nine everyone but um yeah i think it's just so hard to look at a best of five and go yeah i can see jc getting the better of three six nine over the course of a five game series and that like that's where i start to go can it really work out? Yeah, for me right now, my gut tells me it's an 0-3 to all of the teams we've mentioned in JDD, Gen G, T1. Like, I, I don't see... The same goes with Cloud9. Mm -hmm. I think that would just turn into an 0-3. The only angle I would give Mad Lines is Hilly's, like, yeah. ability to play through pikes, be a lot more insane, and just change things up. We saw that last international event, and we always kind of get surprised when it happens. Uh, this time around, we shouldn't be surprised. We know what Hilly plays. We know how they got to their position in finals. Like, this is who they are. Um, but I think it will still, like, it may not shock us. Yeah. But if they go up against the T1 <laughs> and Guma's getting, once again, ran down, not by Shogun, <laughs> by, by Hilly and, and Karzi, like, hey, we warned you. <laughs> like, that, that was out there. That information was available. No one gave it to you or you didn't remember it. All right. Still sounds like a bleak picture that's generally being painted versus the team. So let's do something more fun. EU versus NA, not even just directly, but across the tournament, who wins more games? EU. Who has the better record? <laughs> EU? Yeah. 
Didn't NA have a better have one? Look, in- I'm the new guy. I can't be against the team. <laughs> no, no one's watching. No one's watching. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Yeah, you're the EU guy, but like, I'm you're gonna like, be homeless in summer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the uh, the Euphoria twice, and they both just like throw me under the bus immediately as I got there. And, the, and look, I'm not having it happen again. Ned Lions and Flames, Last Two Worlds. Oh, they got God. beat by EG. It oh, gave man. NA a better yeah. record. I believe it was a better record for for the Worlds, if I'm not mistaken, for like game yeah. score across. Yeah. Yeah. all levels of play which is like obviously a fudge stat but I'm going to ride it because yeah. I need to <laughs> um, and I'm going to do it again here I think NA could actually uh, have a better tournament than EU so G2 are cowards and drew an, uh, an easy bracket so may- maybe they'll get like a little so boost there's there. one win there's, yeah. <laughs> there's maybe like no losses and play-ins there for them maybe that way uh, but yeah I, I do think it's actually possible for NA this year like uh, to, to grab a little bit of regional pride back from EU I, f- I feel like we've been on the cusp yeah. For like the last couple of tournaments where it's like slightly better performances by EU. They'll get like one team through yeah. into group stage and then or into bracket stage and get get slammed. It wasn't that competitive, yeah. but it's like, oh, they keep getting just slightly further than us. I feel like this could be the year. I think Xena this is the would tournament. have to hard carry. Because <laughs> yeah, I already said it earlier on, I think PSG's pride is going to knock Golden Guardians out. Do you really out. think PSG's going to knock Golden Guardians out? That's just me saying it, putting it on to the ether. I'm a little bit afraid, okay? Rez, <laughs> yes? Golden Guardians play PSG and win. You're swimming home. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Look, I'll get my swim you trunks. Don't, you didn't believe the Golden Guardians. Where's the F you had you? The F, the F you the booties channel. for you to swim across the ocean. <laughs> You're not... Right through the Atlantic. I don't know how long that'll take, but <laughs> I'm ready. I'm willing to do it because I literally lied. I said that I would never, like I would always believe in Golden Guardians. After I didn't believe in them throughout their entire run, Got to the final uh, finals weekend, said I believed in them. And I was like, I will never doubt them again. And now I'm looking at this international Two event. Two later, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now back to doubting them versus PSG. So it's happening. Look, uh, what can I say? They'll beat Gam. I think they'll beat Gam. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you what, what, you're, no. you're saying it like it's like, oh yeah. guys, I'm giving him a bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they'll be Gam. I'm saying that we're gonna do better than EU. I'm straight up. Your truth. I will say, I actually think if it is a good day for MS and it's like Cloud9 versus the teams, I think Niski is gonna be okay, but like Caps hasn't had a good split. Mm-hmm. And I definitely think if you can punish Caps, you can punish a lot of what G2 wanna do. Yeah. And that's where I like I could actually see something where you could bring it back. So so then yeah. you're on my side. And yeah, over we'll, EU. We'll, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be willing to put a bet down, but because I'm delirious, I can't think of one right now. But oh, like, if there's a something. if there's a bet that we'll tweet out later, yeah, yeah. who has better betting on games? Maybe game game win rate for the tournament. Way, do you know what's way more interesting? Okay, right. give me we better, make better horrible bet. bets, but it's all on the guys for next week. <gasps> so they're the ones who actually. Oh, have we to pass do it on. We just pass it on. So whoever sits in the far right side has bet that NA will have a better win rate than EU in this tournament. Yeah, and then we get to we can just come up. I wonder who's like watch. I'm watching an EU person sit in this chair. <laughs> I'd be a punishment if they didn't watch this episode. You don't even have to make the bet. In the comment section, you guys give out ideas yes. of what that bet's going to be. <laughs> and then it's going to be the next batch of talent on this desk that has to act it out. Right. I like right. this. Yeah. This is cowardice as a group draw. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll do it. It's just, it's, it's on the other side of it. Okay. All right. But yeah, I think, that's, I think that we end on that. I think that's good. I think... Yeah, I think we'll have to come up. We we'll at least figure out what the best one is from the comment section. I'm just gonna let them run it. But uh, yes, yeah. Well, look, that's you did it. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's nice to actually get through. We're glad you guys survived the entire way through. Yes. I thought you were gonna die. I'm wired, dude. I'm ready to go another hour. Let's go. <laughs> what else we got to talk about? I'm gonna throw it off there for at some point. <laughs> no, what I'm happening? I'm well, good. look. Thank you very much for joining us all. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to chat to the lads. I don't think I've actually done it that for you guys before, but make sure you're tuning in for MSI that kicks off on Tuesday because, of course, we're in London, so we have to say it's, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Isn't it? <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> At uh, 1 p.m., we'll be kicking off with PSG versus DFM. It's going to be an absolute banger. We'll find out if it Raz is actually going to be correct with PSG talent. And uh, yeah, make sure you tune in because it'll be an exciting stuff. Thank you so like, much for joining us. Comment and subscribe. <laughs> but only on this one, not the next one. Not the next one. <laughs> not the- <laughs>